and it's been around since 1962. All the fortunes are inserted individually. Nice vanilla taste to it. Hey, welcome back to Get Lost Traveling. I'm David. And today I'm in San Francisco again, and I'm about to get started on an urban hike along the Barbary Coast Trail. If you're looking for a great way to experience San Francisco's sight, food, and fascinating history, this is probably something you want to check out. And as usual, I will be keeping a track of how many steps I take. I'll do a wrap up at the end of this to give you guys a summary of what's happened. Anyways, there's lots to see, so let's get started. The Barbary Coast Trail is a city hike connecting historic site and local history museums in San Francisco. It's roughly about 4.3 miles long, which is about 7 kilometers. The trail was established in 2000, but the historic sites all date back to the California Gold Rush era from 1849 to 1906. We are starting off this walk at the old San Francisco Mint. The San Francisco Mint is the oldest building in the city. It was built in 1854 to serve the gold mines during the gold rush. It closed in 1933 when the new mint opened. So each of these medallions will actually point you to the direction that you're supposed to be going. And so we're actually headed towards this way because the mint's right over here, and so we're heading up towards Market Street. So we came from over there, right over there. This is Market Street here, and we are walking right up to the cable car station at Powell. Okay, so now we are past the cable car turnabout and Market Street. We're walking up Powell Street right now, and there's just a lot of stores, uh, retailers, but there's just not a, lot, not a lot of people walking around. We're not fully opened for tours, but there are a lot of still local people coming around and people that live in the area in California are starting to visit. Okay, so we just walked up to Union Square. There's a lot of construction going on. This used to be a sand dune until they transformed it into a 2.6 acre public park but today it's one of the most popular tourist attractions in the city. You got the St. Francis Hotel right across the street from it, as well as a lot of high-end retailers all around. Okay, so right across the street from Union Square, we have Maiden Lane. And this is where there's a famous building here. And it's called the Wright Building, the Frank Lloyd Wright Building. And it's the only one that we have in the city. Yeah, today it's a high-end clothing store, I think for men. We've left the Maiden Lane area and heading down to the Dragon Gate. We'll be heading into Chinatown. The Dragon Gate began construction in 1968 at a cost of $75,000. And at that time, Taiwan donated the tiles for the roof and also the Guardian Lions. Lion on the left-hand side is male and the lion on the right hand side is female and we're walking down what is typically the tourist Chinatown there normally is a lot of tourists 
on this in this uh, little road here but we don't have too much tours these days <laughs> and as you can see there's some stores that's open but a lot of these souvenir stores and and businesses that rely on tourists are pretty much shuttered for now it is a little bit sad to see all these stores closed but that's just kind of how things are these days the St. Mary's Cathedral which is right over here across the street uh, before you get there there's on Quince is a park it's St. Mary's Square and it's a pretty nice park kind of hidden away and I think there is a little playground up there for kids and stuff but we won't be going up there like this <laughs> not with a camera anyways just uh, if you want a place to rest up or anything like that you might want to check that out and right across the street from the park is St. Mary's Cathedral and right next to the church you have a cable car line which goes from downtown all the way up here into Knob Hill and this is the California line for cable car after walking past St. Mary's Cathedral we're walking down to Waverly Place so this is Waverly Place and the street is it's got a lot of like old buildings that have been around here for a while and have been home to quite a lot of little businesses and stuff like that it's always interesting because i've walked down here before and after so many years i haven't been here for a while it kind of looks it looks the same <laughs> very much looks the same so waverly place came about because in the 19th century when the chinese immigrants were here building the railroads and helping with the gold rush era there was a lot of anti-chinese sentiment and they restricted a lot of their buildings and things like that throughout the city and so chinatown became a place where people congregated and started to live And because of all the restrictions, they ended up building on top of their barbershops, laundromats, and restaurants. And even after the 1906 earthquake, many rebuilt and continue living in this area. So this is a bit of a walk down memory lane for me. And yeah, it looks very familiar, familiar except for some of these uh, build outs for the uh, pandemic and I think these are probably here to stay but these are pretty nice um, we're gonna look for the temple and uh, the Tinhao temple and we're gonna go check it out uh, this is probably gonna happen a lot more than normal so the temple is actually closed for tours and only available for members to visit so after we have walked through Waverly Place, we're going to cross Washington Street and then we're going to head over to Roth Alley over here. So you're probably wondering what's down Roth Alley. It's the Golden Gate Fortune Cookie Company. Roth Alley is pretty small and there's not a lot of people walking down it. It's just uh, one block and the Golden Gate Fortune Cookie Company is down at the end of the street. So this is it. This is Golden Gate Fortune Cookie Factory. And it's been around since 1962. I think this is probably one of the only places that still make fortune cookies one at a time by hand. So I just walked in and the lady just handed me a cookie. It's actually it's still warm, really nice. Let's have a taste. Mm. 
really cool. Nice vanilla taste to it. So this is the Chinatown telephone exchange. Back in the olden days, this is where they used to do the switchboard for uh, phones when operators were needed to redirect phone calls. And once dial phones became a thing, they no longer needed this switchboard center and they closed down and now it's a bank. And about a block down from the old telephone exchange is Portsmouth Square. This is where a lot of Chinese elderly come here. Actually, senior citizens, they come here. There's a lot of gambling over here, actually. A lot of people playing cards and stuff. So as far as parks are concerned, <laughs> it's very interesting because there's a lot of smoke, cigarette smokes as well as gambling just people sitting around the benches and playing cards so this is empire park it's a public open space that's privately owned but i think it's currently closed right now i don't think you can get in yeah it's currently locked up so you cannot get in but normally there's quite a lot of people here just kind of sitting around people buy their lunches and come eat here as well and it's fairly convenient because it's close to a lot of the restaurants nearby so this is a pretty fun walk so far but i'm finding it a bit challenging because there's a lot of turns and things like that and we're coming up on one of these and montgomery and we're going to turn over here and head down towards the Transamerica building. Now we are at the Transamerica building. And this is very familiar for anybody who has visited or has looked into visiting San Francisco. And you probably didn't know that there is a park with a bunch of redwood trees right next to the Transamerica building. And this is it. This is the Transamerica Redwood Park. There's about, I think, 30 something to 40 redwood trees in this area with, some, with a fountain. Pretty nice relaxing here. Now we're leaving the park and we're going to cross the street to hoteling that little alley over here. So actually I had to double back around a little bit because I missed the place that's the Wells Fargo Museum and we're actually right in front of it right now but it's closed because of the lockdown that's still in, in essence going on in the city. I just wanted to swing by and show you where it is. I'm back at hoteling place right now and this road actually used to be where the shoreline for the San Francisco Bay began. And so since this used to be the uh, shoreline, everything over here is basically built on landfill. Uh, sunken ships and also a lot of trash that used to line this entire area. And if you look around, there's a lot of hitching posts and the hitching posts were for horses. And at the end of the block hoteling place, we have the hoteling building. It used to be the largest liquor uh, repository in the West Coast and it survived the 1906 earthquake surprisingly. And it's telling me to go down another alley again. I'm going through a lot of alleys today. And now we are leaving the financial district and heading over to North Beach. So for the longest time this building was called the Columbus Building but they switched it back to the original name which is Sentinel Building and this was bought by Francis Ford Coppola and a lot of people think he bought it with the money he made from The Godfather. So now 
now we have walked a little bit further down on Columbus from the Sentinel building and we have hit Vesuvio Cafe. And right next door is City Lights Bookstore. It's an independent bookstore and publisher. It was founded in 1958 by a poet and social activist, Lawrence Ferlinghetti. And right in between the bookstore and the bar is Jack Kerouac Alley. And there's just a bunch of murals all along the way. Continue to walk down Columbus for a few blocks all the way to Washington Square but on the way there there's a bunch of restaurants and eateries and right here is Molinari's it's a delicatessen and it's been around for a really long time since the 1896 we are at Columbus and Stockton and we're close to a place that I used to get pizza from and we'll, let's just go over there and get a slice of pizza. It's uh, Golden Boy. Can I get a slice of the pepperoni pizza, please? Yes. Left-hand side. Okay, so we're gonna try the pizza. I actually took a bite earlier. It was really good, but I forgot to record it. So <laughs> I'm taking another bite. It's actually really good. I haven't had this in a while. The crust is really nice. Nice and crispy and chewy as well. So it's real good. Okay, so a little bit more walking. And we have gotten to Washington Square. This is an extremely popular park in a North Beach area. There's a time capsule that's very underneath here. And I think the original was placed in here in 1879 and they opened it up in 1979 and then replaced it with another capsule that should be opened in 2079. Now we have a decision to make. We can either go up to Court Tower or just bypass it. And normally I take the opportunity to go up Court Tower because it's pretty close and it's a good walk, but I've done it so many times. I'm just gonna walk down to the Fisherman's Wharf and kind of wrap up the, this part of the walk. It's been quite a bit of a trek so far. If you are following the medallions, the markers on the ground, it should take you now to the beginning of Pier 39. So as far as Pier 39 and Fisherman's Wharf is concerned, I've done those places and I've shown you guys in the last couple of videos ago. So check that one out. There should be a card coming up if you haven't seen it. So after about half an hour of walking down um, through Pier 39 and Fisherman's Wharf, I'm at the end of Fisherman's Wharf right now in the beginning of the San Francisco Maritime Historic National Park. I don't know, I don't remember. I think I got all the key words in though. And we're just turning into the Hyde Street Pier right now and should be some nice stuff to see. The Hyde Street Pier is a part of the National Park System. And if you have the annual pass, you can get in for free 
which is pretty nice. If you don't have to pass to get in, the fee is $15. The park itself closes at, um, at I think, 5 o'clock. This historic pier was the primary ferry terminal for automobiles before the Golden Gate Bridge was built. The pier itself is part of Highway 101. So you can pretty much get on the boats and walk around and these are pretty nice actually. They're kept pretty well. Although, I mean, they're probably not saleable. And we're gonna go up to the upper deck here. So we've arrived at Aquatic Park and this is a part of the Maritime National Historic Park as well. This is a pretty local place. A lot of locals like to come walk, run, and a lot of them do swim in the bay as well. We are at the Maritime Museum and the Maritime Museum is actually located inside a bathhouse that was built in the 1930s. The outside of the museum is decorated like a boat and on the inside there's a lot of colorful murals that line the interior. Unfortunately right now it's closed and so we cannot go in. It closes at 4 o'clock. So with the Maritime Museum it's pretty much the end of the trail. We're gonna board the cable car and we're gonna head into the downtown area. So I had this whole thing planned out and was gonna show you the route for the cable car heading back to downtown. But I met these ladies and they were really interesting and we had really good conversation. Oh yeah. <laughs> And the ride was pretty fun. Uh, I basically took it from the Fisherman's Wharf area all the way back to downtown downtown Market Street, and uh, ended up uh, chatting up with some ladies from South Carolina and San Diego. And it was really funny. Had a good time on the ride. Anyways, uh, right now. I think I'm pretty much done with everything. Heading back to my car and we'll do a quick wrap up on how many steps and how long I've walked. So I'm pretty much done with the trip right, the, the hiking right now. Just to wrap things up, I walked a total of about 18,000 steps during the hike today and it's been pretty good. I really enjoyed this little walk. I hope you guys also enjoyed it. So that's kind of it. I'm ending it right here. Thanks for getting lost with me and I will see you on the next one.